Uh, they show a Heyman segment backstage where he's on the phone with Lesnar, but apparently Lesnar has no reception or something like that, and he still looks worried. And they announced that we're going to get Reigns versus Rollins, and then we get a look back at Mark Henry and Rusev's arm wrestling contest on SmackDown. They show a video from the Olympic gold medalist high jumper Charles Austin with encouraging words for Mark Henry. And then we get a Renee Young segment backstage with Roman Reigns. And uh, we get a look back at the Shield breaking up three months ago, and Rain says that he stands alone now, and then he cuts a promo about basically just beating Rollins' face. Pretty much. I mean, sa- says he's going to you know, destroy Rollins, he's going to do it for Dean Ambrose. Again, it seems like a pretty typical Roman Reigns promo, nothing really stand out here. Renee Young is adorable, so I say she wins this segment, and nothing more to say than that. I would agree with that. Excellent, excellent. I would agree with that passionately. <laughs> All right, then. So what came next, my brother? Jack Swagger versus Bo Dallas in another infuriating babyface win. Yeah, you know, it, it's so funny because, again, looking at the SmackDown recap, Bo got a win over Justin Gabriel, which it was, a, I guess, nice to see Justin Gabriel on main TV, seeing how he's just so uh, so good when he's on NXT. But, you know, Bo wins that. And, you know, really, with all of Bo Dallas, like his taunting of Jack Swagger, his disgracing him and this and that, I mean, of course, Swagger is going to have to get the win eventually, but why did it have to be, like, this soon? Like, a- after all that, couldn't you have let Bo get the win? Maybe have Zeb really talk some uh, some sense into Swagger out. Maybe even give him another slap, kind of imply that things may be on the first between those two, because now Swagger's lost in another big match where his pride was at stake, and then he comes back and he redeems himself. Like, it was a good match between these two, and there were points where I thought Bo was going to get the win, and I was relieved, but... Uh, Swagger gets that Patriot lock, and Bo Dallas taps out. So, yeah. Bo Dallas taps out, John. And I believed, so I don't know what went wrong. You know, like, uh, didn't we have enough Bo Leavers giving their support Well, I to mean, if, if Bo leaving is anything rec- like religion, if it doesn't work, then obviously you were the one that did it wrong. So apparently you didn't believe enough. <sighs> I'm ashamed of myself. You should be. I will uh, I will deeply reflect on this afterwards. But in all seriousness, Ashton, like it's just another case of where a program has potential. Because I even thought like the segment that Bo did, like highlighting all the people that Swagger went down, I enjoyed that. Like that was the right kind of hilarious. Unlike growing up, um, Bella, which was just hilarious in the worst possible sense. And I felt like this program had some potential. But once again, like Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, at least for the time being, until they find a way around it, I don't care now because the babyface got the win. So what does he have to prove? Once a babyface beats a detractor or an enemy, it's kind of like playing a video game. You know, we were talking about Cena and Lesnar, I think, like an episode or two back, and you made the brilliant analogy of going through video game bosses. Well, I think that's a babyface mentality in general. You know, once you go, uh, once you beat a certain boss, unless you want to try it on a different difficulty, there's really no reason to go back to that same level and do it again. Yeah. You already did it. A babyface looks forward. They never look back. Maybe a heel will. And the, the, the different difficulty is like, uh, just to keep up the analogy, that would be like a gimmick change kind of. Uh, yeah, a gimmick change or just a new prize above an old rivalry, so to speak. Um, like, say, for example, Cena and Orton most recently when the belts were consolidated. Right. You know, like, that's a reason to get them back in the ring together. But see, that that's the thing. The babyface view is always looking forward because they're supposed to be these good guys, the op- these optimistic, you know, whatever, uh, taking care of their business and then moving on to bigger and better things. Right, so and why they- would Swagger still care about Bo after beating him clean twice? Precisely. Precisely. It may make sense for Oh, because he's annoying. E- exactly. It may make sense for a heel to want to look back, but that's only in cases like, say, when Triple H was World Heavyweight Champion and he lost the title. Of course you're going to look back because you're jaded. It's the world title. You want it back. So, of course, you're fixated in that moment in time. But that that's the difference between babyface thought process and heel thought process. So now, logically, if these two have another match again, for what purpose is Swagger going to have to look back? If anything, Bo should have to go through a number one contender's match or some crap to get another match with Swagger. I mean, it's just laughable. I don't know. Yeah. Like, what's <sighs> the what's the point? And I, I've been reading for a while now that this is yet another gimmick that, that Vince is not high on for main TV. You know, he's not a fan of Bo Dow. He doesn't think he was clicking when it seemed like Bo was starting to get something together. I just don't know if it ever came full circle. Because the fans' reactions to Bo, 
I felt like were intriguing from week to week because you actually had quite a few legitimate bow leavers, you know, going bow, leave, bow, leave. Other times he would get the heat. So I don't know, you know, what went wrong, but this is another prospect where I'm just kind of putting my hand over my face and just shaking my head because it's, it's not as bad as Adam Rose because at least Bo Dallas gets time and program somewhat, but still, like, he's just he's just running around in circles. Yeah. Oh, man. Triple H, <sighs> what do you man. say about what stuff like this happens, John? What do you say? I don't know. Uh, so do you just want to move on? Yeah, let's move on, dude. Okay, let's move on to another infuriating segment. Paige and Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee and Brie Bella. Um, nothing really to say here. I, I will commend WWE, I, I guess, somewhat because they did tease that uh, that Brie and Nikki may interact in the beginning, but then Nikki faked her out. So they're yeah, trying dude. To- honestly, the part about this that pissed me off the most was yeah. that freaking uh, was it Nikki? I think it was Nikki goes out around and pulls AJ off the apron. Like Nikki is heel tacticking AJ. AJ is supposed to be above this. I know. The fact that AJ fell prey to a Bella twin, I, I just, I don't know. And, and look, that's not to say that they're that they're stupid, because I'm sure in real life they're very intelligent women, but they've never been portrayed as cerebral wrestlers in the past. The most cerebral thing they've done is do twin magic, and of course for jokes that we've made about Nikki Bella's uh, you know, plastic surgery and stuff like that, uh, that clearly doesn't doesn't work anymore that's not trying to be a knock that's just stating it for what it is so they've never been painted as like these crafty wrestlers uh if anything just the opposite you know just by the skin of your teeth type cheaters whereas aj i mean i think she's the pinnacle of like getting in your head and royally screwing with you and whatever um so you know i don't know page gets the win uh, pinning brie off the rampage which is still a sick finisher i think uh page I'm going to say it after really uh, reflecting on it. I think even more than AJ, I think Paige is the best move set in the women's division. I, I'd say it's her, AJ, and Naomi is like the top three tier. And I, I guess you could make an argument that they are not interchangeable given your tastes. But I, I just think Paige has an excellent move set between the PTO, the Rampage, uh, the Paige Turner, the headbutts that she does, the knees, you know, when they're leaning against the ropes on the outside. She's just very vicious, and I love it. So, yeah, it gets the win off the Rampage. And then we have the little thing, another little tease between AJ and Paige. Paige starts skipping around the ring, but then AJ, you know, synchronizes her skipping with Paige's. Paige kind of stops a few times, gives AJ a few bewildered looks, says, Stop it! Go! Because, yeah, clearly skipping was Paige's thing. It's not like she stole it from AJ or anything, and AJ's just trying to take it back. And then AJ leaves, and that concludes that segment. So The way this whole angle has been handled is really, really, and I hate to keep on using this word, but I feel like it's appropriate, so I'll use it again, infuriating. Dude, see my thing, I don't want to come down hard on AJ and Paige. I really don't, because I, I love both women, and I really do believe that they're trying. I, I do. I genuinely believe that. I don't think this is like the Bella thing where it's like, oh, you know, it, it's so bad this out of the other. I just don't understand why it had to be this. I don't understand why it just couldn't be about who is the best because that clearly seemed like where this whole story was going. Between Paige getting the upset kind of hiccup like win over AJ when she apparently only came out to congratulate her, even though she was in her wrestling gear, and then AJ making a return and doing the same thing. AJ even said it, like, after their one match, I I don't think it was Money in the Bank, but maybe maybe it was, um, where, you know, they're like two gunslingers in the West. I like that, because that's kind of the image I had of these two women. You know, the modern day Lita and Trish, as so many other people have said before me, and, and now it seems like, well, it can't just be about them being the best. We've got to do head games well that's fine but i don't really know if these head games were the best i just don't even really know how to feel about this program anymore because i genuinely do not hate it you know it's not that but i can't say i'm in love with it either i'm I'm in kind of a limbo with it dude yeah i feel you on that dude totally yeah it's it's because i want to like it and i I just i i can't bring myself to authentically do so without some kind of complaint and that's such a shame because these two are so talented and they deserve better. These two women, I could buy. You know what? It's so funny that I was saying earlier about Mark Henry and Rusev getting to main event a Raw. And like how it's sometimes refreshing to do undercard segments and this and that. Because 
if we are going to get one more Page and AJ match, I felt like it, it would have been worthy to main event a Raw. And on their technical merits alone, I still believe that. But this story, man, that they've been trying to do with these two has been more of an anchor than anything else. Yes, I don't know. I, uh, I completely agree. Yeah, so there you go. If you have nothing more to say, we can move on. I have nothing more to say. <laughs>